Welcome to Feed Dump, where earlier this week it was Super Tuesday, and we are other members of the Justice Week. I am Bat Monday. Joining me this week is Wonder Wednesday. I'm an invisible jet! And Thor's Day. I'm all for reaching a hand across the aisle. Cam, I'm glad you're here because we have an update on the man who was caught smuggling turtles in his pants. Uh, which one? Uh, the most recent one? Windsor, Ontario man Dong Yan was convicted of trying to smuggle 38 turtles in his pants. And the terms of the conviction were 50 hours of community service, two years of probation, a $3,500 fine, and he's never allowed to own reptiles again. So look out, frogs. Well, if you're looking to smuggle animals in your pants, insects are naturally gregarious. He was also ordered to write a letter about his experiences, quote, for publication as the Department of the Environment sees fit. For our American audience, this is part of a new Trudeau-led initiative to uh, involve more restorative justice involving public shame. We'll let you know when it starts working. What if he's an animal smuggling fetishist and is a sub for being publicly shamed? This could be part of his long game. In new reptile news, a gang of drug dealers in Amsterdam suffered 11 arrests and the seizure of 300,000 euros that they had left in a cage being guarded by a pair of crocodiles. How do you even get crocodiles in Amsterdam? What kind of drugs were these? According to the police report, half a million euros worth of crystal meth and a large quantity of synthetic drugs. For when Bishop just needs to get really fucked up. No, but seriously, it's probably MDMA. I couldn't imagine being on MDMA around crocodiles. I'd be all like, oh, your skin is so bumpy, and my arm just gets sheared off. Then again, synthetic drugs covers a wide variety of things. Maybe they were hallucinogens. Do we know for certain that there were crocodiles? Maybe it was just one of those polo shirts with a crocodile embroidered on it. Did you think about that? I bet you didn't. $300,000 worth of drugs guarded by a couple of crocodiles. It sounds like the drug dealers were taking their business cues from mid-2000s rap videos. What tipped off the police? Were the drug dealers out for a spin in their solid platinum diamond encrusted canal boat? If the money and the crocodiles were both in the same cage, then how did the drug dealers get to their money? I have troubles changing the water in a turtle tank. Well, maybe these weren't guard crocodiles at all and were part of their loot stash. Perhaps they were waiting to be turned into shoes. Fanciest fucking crocs you ever put on your feet. Following judicial approval of a class action lawsuit, Subway will have to ensure that their foot-long sandwich bread is exactly 12 inches long. You'd think a company named Doctors Associates would be a little more stringent about making measurements. Yo, heads up, Subway's owned by a company called Doctors Associates. They're not doctors! Now that they're required to make certain that their sandwiches are exactly 12 inches long, maybe now they'll train their employees to tile the cheese triangles correctly. And smush the tuna balls evenly. It's not hard to make certain they line up correctly. I know, because I have to open up my sandwich and rearrange them. And people look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. I just care about these things. It's important. I can't, I can't fucking... Also tuna balls? And when I say I want spinach, I want, like, spinach, not a fucking garnish. Guys, they're sandwich artists, not sandwich engineers. Though it is a little weird that they serve meat with an ice cream scoop. I'm not asking for Park Well here, but, like, they tessellate so evenly. Why wouldn't you? It drives me insane. I just need my cheese done well. It should be mentioned that Subway was found to have done no wrong as part of this and has been asked to pay no monetary costs as part of this class action lawsuit. The, the, the reason this happened is because all their bread gets made into sort of uniform dough slugs and, that go out to the restaurants and sometimes they bake a little small. I think all this has done is force Subway to throw away a lot of bread. I've also tried telling women that I bake small. Oh good, is it time for the dick jokes? Oh, really mine's more of a flatbread. Or a deli round. If I'm going to Subway, typically I'll get the chopped salad. I don't know what that means now. Damn, you're into some sick shit. And smells like freshly baked bread has never worked on my Tinder profile. Whereas I found that bringing back Applewood smoked pulled pork makes it percolate. I just sprinkle mine with herbs and cheese. Oh, I know Herb, I met him on Grinder, which I thought was a kind of sandwich. It is, but it's also a different kind of sandwich. That's what Herb showed me. Yeah, he's a nice guy. But Herb can eat a foot long like you're throwing it in a wood chipper. A woman was stopped by the TSA at Baltimore Washington International Airport 
because she was wearing a pair of stiletto heels that were shaped like guns. What's Bayonetta doing flying domestic? I understand stilettos are traditionally the most uncomfortable high heels to walk around in, so I don't know why she'd want to do that with some shoes resembling AR-15s. The AR-15 is quite modular. Maybe she was using the Picatinny rail to mount like a foregrip or a sight, her keys, boarding pass. Hang on, a stiletto's a knife. There's been some serious epistemological drift here. Is that like Tokyo drift? Oh god, not in those shoes. Also, because she was running late for her flight, her only option was to abandon the shoes at TSA, so she's on a plane barefoot somewhere. Wait, isn't this how Die Hard started? Oh, yes, Blockbuster. Ho, 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 now I have a pair of Barrett 50 Cal Louboutin. At a routine traffic stop in Ohio, a fugitive from Tampa, Florida didn't want to be identified, so he made the call to chew off his fingertips. Well, you can take the man out of Florida. Jesus Christ, did he escape from the movie Seven? Did he not think eating his fingertips would also be suspicious? Maybe we're all lucky that the cops stopped him before he got to his retinas. I'd kind of like to see how a man would try to eat his own retinas. So would I. That's why we should make Hellraiser 8. Oh, he's also going to have to swallow his teeth. And all his hair and follicles. Soon he will form a dire Ouroboros and slowly consume himself until he disappears from the mortal plane. Nor would he be twice is fat. Sir, I pulled you over because your taillight was out. I haven't stopped to eat in 12 hours. It's a free country. This has all made me very uncomfortable. So, uh, until next time, remember, there may be better sources for news, but they don't have this hat, which is actually a MAGFest tiara, courtesy of some kind people at MAGFest. Wow, that's really pinching the sides of my head. I can see through time and hear colors. Wow. Mmm. Well, thanks for feed dumping. Mm. Mm. You can hear that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, it can be the most painful visor in the world. Because it also has the claw. Ah, there we go. That. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right on my temples. Yeah. <laughs>